So welcome everyone to this um, Power of the Platform session all about perspectives. My name is Ellie Grecken. I am the Education Services Manager here, and I have been with the Cloud Health specific team uh, for almost six years now, so very well versed in the platform. And I'm happy to be running the session with you all today. So a couple of just logistics, um, so that we're all clear. Uh, I would love for you as we go through to use the chat or Q&A, either one, whichever you prefer, to ask any questions that you have as we go through this. Um, this is your training, not mine. Uh, so I wanna make sure that I tailor it to anything that you might want to know or need to know. Um, if you're interested in this content, um, I'm recording the session and it will be available in the Academy as of tomorrow, uh, as well as all the slides that we're using. Uh, will also be available in there as well. So you have access to all of that. And uh, just so we're clear, you unfortunately are on mute. It just doesn't work when we have a ton of people on the call to be able to let everybody chat. So that is what the chat or the Q&A is for. Ask your questions. I'll be checking as we go. Um, so please feel free to ask away. Love questions. And that way I can kind of make sure you get any answers you need. So. What we're going to be talking about today is we're going to start with the basics of what our perspectives you might know um and that's okay i'm not going to spend a ton of time on that i just want to make sure we're all on the same page as we go through this uh i'm going to talk about some of the updates that have been made to the perspective section of our platform because there have been some changes recently um they're mostly cosmetic but still important to note if you're used to the page that it might look just a little different and then i really want to talk about tagging um, some of our recommendations and best practices, uh, the solutions that we have in the platform that relate to tagging, and then how you manage your untagged resources or shared costs. So let's dive in. Uh, let's start right here with perspectives. This is the sentence you'll hear a lot. Uh, perspectives are a framework that allow you to place assets into meaningful groups. I always think about it as uh, a way to organize your data. <laughs> into groupings that are uh, useful for your organization. Uh, I use a different example than you might hear from other people at the company. I think of a musical playlist. You have a thousand songs, you can sort them by song title, by artist, by genre. You're still looking at the same thousand songs. You're just sorting it in a way that's meaningful to you so you can find the songs that you're looking for. And that's essentially what we're doing here is we're taking your assets and putting them into meaningful groups for you so you can find the assets that you're looking for. And these can be built using metadata or tags, depending on what you're trying to build. And basically it's there to allow you to find groupings and create groupings that are meaningful for you. And then you can use them throughout the platform. Um, if you were to just use, let's say a tag, there's discrepancy between how each person tags something. So I might tag something with environment, and you might tag it with ENV, and it's still the same tag, but unfortunately it's two tags. And so you'd have to run that report twice, once for each tag, and then you'd have half your results in one, half your results in the other. What we do with the perspectives is we clean it up. So if we use my musical playlist, maybe I have um, some songs that are from Michael Jackson, and I tagged some of them Michael Jackson, and some of them Michael J, and then some of them just Jackson. Um, I can take all versions of that and put them under Michael Jackson so that when I'm looking for my Michael Jackson music, it's all there under the same grouping and header so I don't have to search for multiple different versions of it. The groupings that we see most often tend to be the ones that we have here on the screen. So something like line of business, product, application, environment. Um, and these are the ones that you'll see today as I go through. That's going to be what we have in our demo account. And so just keep that in mind that these are just suggestions and ones that we see often. You might have reason to build other groupings um, that are meaningful to your organization. So I'm going to jump right into the platform here to show you what those um, perspectives actually look like. And so the main page of the platform actually, sorry, I have multiple tags open, is found under the, oh my goodness, I'm just clicking on everything today, under the setup menu under perspectives. And what you'll see here is a bunch of different boxes and each box is a perspective. 
And so you'll be able to see the assets that are allocated to each perspective, what percentage of your assets, and we'll talk more about assets in a minute, are actually allocated here. If you actually go into a perspective to build, so this is one that I created just about five minutes ago, um, you'll be able to see the name or the grouping. So uh, if it was like environment or um, artist genre, if we're following my musical exa example, then you'll see that listed at the top. This search panel in the center is where you're going to actually search through your infrastructure for the uh, assets uh, that you are interested in. So depending on if you want to choose a tag or you want to choose some um, metadata, you have the availability of choosing both of those. Below, you'll see all of your quote unquote assets not allocated. These are all of the assets that have yet to be grouped into your perspective. And you have your groups on the side here. These are going to be those subcategories. So if we're talking about uh, your environment as your group, then for as your, I'm sorry, perspective, then your groups would be your <clears throat> uh, production, development, staging, etc. If you're talking about my music and I wanted to do genre, you'd see hip hop, R&B, classic rock, pop, etc. all listed down here. So let's open an actual workable perspective. Sorry, I've got one here for us. And so you can see all of my groups are kind of listed on the side over here. Um, each one of these subcategories re represents a project. And I can see each of the projects over here on the side. When you're building out your perspective, you do it from the center here. Um, you have the opportunity to categorize or search. That's where you're going to um, identify whether you're searching for something specific. I want to use this tag with this tag value and find the results of that and put it into a specific group. Or if you want to categorize, which will allow you to see, I'm going to do this one, um, let's say any of your assets that fall under a specific category. So if I want my Amazon taggable assets and any associated assets, um, I can see all of the tag values that are available in the multiple platforms. So in, in this case, uh, Amazon, but if I was using Azure, it would be Azure, et cetera, and then categorize. And that will allow you to see all of the 28 distinct groups that are available for this particular tag that have been created. And from there, you can create your subgroupings by either um, adding them statically or dynamically. Adding something statically means the 28 groups that exist is what will go into here. And then if any new categories are created in the future, um, you would have to manually add them. And if you're adding them statically, then you can, I'm sorry, dynamically, whoo, then you can um, add those 28 groups. And then if tomorrow a new group is spun up, then it will automatically create a 29th group, a 30th group, et cetera, as you go. I'll jump back into the platform in a minute, but I wanna talk a little bit more about assets and things like that. So I mentioned assets. When you're looking at the screen and you've got all of these quote unquote assets that you're putting into your perspectives, you have your, oh, there's my groupings. Of course it's now. Um, you have your assets not allocated at the bottom of the screen. And these are all the assets that are not currently in your groupings. And so what does an asset actually mean? Well, we have two kinds of assets. We have financial assets, which is anything that has a direct cost associated. So an instance or a virtual machine, a volume, a snapshot, there's a charge for each of those items in the cloud. And so if there's a cost associated, then we have that information in here available. And there's also non-financial assets. These are items that do not have an associated cost. So it could be a framework or feature asset. So a security group, cloud formation template, a user. Um, you can have hundreds of users in your cloud, but there's no charge for having those users. And so it's just available and doesn't affect anything. So when we're building out these perspectives, we really wanna focus on those financial assets, the items that have a cost associated, because those are the things that you're gonna to use to find uh, your reports, because you're looking for things that are high cost. Um, check out this list of assets that I have here, and you'll notice I'm on financial assets. 
Watch what happens when I switch to all assets. This list becomes significantly longer, and that will include those uh, non-financial related assets. And so you want to keep in mind that when we're building this, we really only need to focus in on the things that have a cost associated, and that makes those perspectives a little easier to build. The other thing to keep in mind with assets is asset activity. So we have active assets and historical assets. And an active asset is anything that is currently in use within your infrastructure. Um, these are available through your cloud provider's console. So anything when you spun up infrastructure yesterday, you spun it up last week and it's still going, great. Um, you also have historical assets, any asset that is no longer in use in your infrastructure. So I could have spun something up and then terminated it, but it still exists as an asset because we keep historical data and we keep up to 13 months. So you could have had an instance that existed for an hour 12 months ago, and it will still be in the cloud. So when we talk about things like tagging strategy, and that's gonna come up next, uh, just keep in mind that it's hard to go back and find those assets that existed for a short period of time and adjust them. So those might not be things that you necessarily care about reporting on. So there's going to be sometimes some of these assets left over, and these are some of the reasons why. All right, so let's talk about the items that have been updated in the platform. So the first thing is we've restructured the guided search panel. So in the center of the screen where you actually look up your assets, it used to be choose the type of asset that you wanna find, and then you can choose to search or categorize. Now it's you choose to categorize or search first, and then you choose your asset type. Not a huge difference, but if you're used to doing it one and then the other, and now we've swapped it, uh, it just uh, might look a little different. The other thing that we've done is it used to default to search. Now it defaults to categorize because that's the one that we find people use more often. Another change is that uh, it used to say an entire list out of all of the assets that were included in the Amazon Tagle asset grouping. And so it was really hard to read. You couldn't see the whole list and it was a little like missing the items below it because it covered so many things. So we've changed it to just say Amazon or AWS taggable and associated assets. And the last thing is um, you can actually see how your group was created by hovering over the group to get updated info. You no longer have to switch to a different tab to see how that perspective was built. So they're not significant changes, but it's enough to make user experience a little easier. So now that we've seen the updates and we've seen a little bit about what perspectives are, I wanna talk about some of our best practices. And I've started, but I wanna get a little more in depth. So I talked about that percent of assets allocated. When you're building out that perspective, your dream is to take all of those assets from that bottom section where it says assets not allocated and get them all into those groups to get a perfect 100%. But in reality, you do not need to be at 100% allocated. There are multiple reasons why you wouldn't be. How much old data do you have from 13 months ago that is almost impossible for you to identify where it belongs? If you have a number of assets like that, they're going to be difficult to put into these groupings. And so those might be items that you don't necessarily need to put in your group in order for it to still be accurately reporting on what's happening right now. You also have those financial versus non-financial assets that I talked about before. So if you have a lot of non-financial assets, it's not that important that they get attributed to any one particular group. It also depends what you're building. So if I am building a perspective like the one we see here, that's like instance family, might also be if you're doing cross-cloud like machine series or something, you can get that from metadata. But the only things that will really be attributed in that case are your instances, your virtual machines, and your reservations. Every other asset that you have is not relevant to that perspective. So you could be 50% allocated and still be 100% for the purpose of what you're trying to build here. And then multi-cloud. So if you have a multi-cloud environment, um, you're gonna do your best to get as many of the clouds in as possible. And it will um, also depend on how you've tagged those resources and done um, things in that way. Question was, can you sort unallocated tags into cost order so you can target them by value and ignore the zero dollar cost items? Somewhat, yeah. So let's, um, I can answer that one by jumping into the platform for a second. There's probably a couple different ways you can do that. I'm going to go to the most straightforward one, which is our cost history report. What you can do is pick a grouping that is meaningful to you. All right, 
let's go with project because I was looking at that before. It'll list out all of your projects here. So Paul Revere, Sabotage, and Intergalactic. And then I have my assets not allocated. I can actually filter by those asset not allocated. So I can go to the project. I can go to assets not allocated. And it will show me just those assets. And from here, if you were to click into like a particular month, so let's say the most recent month, you can see a list of all of the assets that make up those groupings. It's not individual, um, it's not broken down necessarily by uh, cost order, but you could export this and then have an entire list of those items in a particular cost value. Actually, it looks like they are in cost order, so I lied. Um, highest cost item would be at the top. Never mind, don't listen to me. <laughs> you are correct. So this is probably the easiest way to get a list of those um, items that would fall under this cost history report. And it will tell you what type of item they are. So we've got virtual machines, Azure Active Directory, domain services, SQL database, et cetera. You could probably also do it in the assets menu if you wanted to do it by a particular asset. We're gonna go in there a little bit later to talk about what else you can do in there. So um, we can, we can kind of search that example when we get there. When you're actually building out your perspectives, best practice for Amazon is to choose the first one. So AWS taggable and associated assets, choose that, categorize, find the tag that you're interested in. So let's say environment, get all versions of environment tags, and then second choice is do your uh, AWS taggable assets only, and then it will grab anything else. So what's the difference between the two? The first one is a gather tree. So it's gonna grab your taggable assets and then anything that is attached to those assets, your volumes, your snapshots, et cetera. What's interesting about that is uh, it's cool while they're attached, but let's say I had a snapshot that was attached um, and it was also tagged, uh, potentially that snapshot is separated from the instance, it'll get caught by the second one if I have them both used. If I didn't have that second fail safe built in place, then the snapshot would disappear off of my assets allocated because it's no longer allocated because it's no longer attached. Um, so you do kind of want to grab both of those. For Azure, you're going to build your perspective using resource groups as the asset type and then categorize on either the resource group names and or tags. And then you're gonna leverage the Azure taggable assets option as well to grab any of those tags that you have that, that work. And then for GCP, choose project as the asset type and categorize on your project names or labels that you have. So a couple of things to think about when we're planning out these perspectives and building them is, what, re what categories are really important for your organization to have in order to meet their reporting needs? What do you honestly pick like five things or three things that you really think are important for your organization? Once you've done that, is it possible to use accounts or subscriptions or projects or resource groups to create your, those groupings for your assets? That's going to be the easiest way to do it because that way you are using um, the pre-built groupings from the cloud provider. In Amazon, everything's in an account. And so it's significantly easier to create a grouping based off of account because everything's in there. Same thing with a resource group or project, which is why we recommend that you start with those. If that's not possible, which is quite common, it's common to be able to build like one perspective based off of like account name or something. And then the others, you're going to use your tags. So the next question is, do you have tags that you can use to group your assets? What tags are they? How clean is the tagging? Um, do you have a tagging strategy in place, which is what we'll talk about shortly? Um, and if you do not have accounts to group the assets and you don't have any tags, is there metadata available from the cloud provider themselves that you can use to group those assets? Once you've considered all of those things, let's talk about what we recommend for tagging because Really, that's the thing that you can affect the most. You can't really affect your, your account names and you can't really affect the metadata from the cloud provider, but you can affect the tagging uh, that you have available in your infrastructure. So the process that we recommend once you've decided that you're using tags or labels is choose, like I said, around five main topics that you want your organization to build their infrastructure around. Once you've done that, you're gonna create a tagging strategy 
for your organization to follow. And what do I mean by tagging strategy? Well, if you look in our infrastructure and you look at, let's say, taggable associated assets, you can see all the tags that are available. We've got a lot. CHT ENV. I've got another CHT underscore ENV. I've got CNT ENV. I've got ENV environment. Those are all just environment tags. And so I have no strategy here. So if I want to build an environment perspective, I'm going to have to grab all of the assets in all of those environment tags and put them together in this one grouping. If my organization actually has a strategy in place, they should all be using the same tag. And then I don't have to grab 15 versions. I only have one. It's easy to build the perspective for each of the tags that you have in existence. So when you're creating this tagging strategy, the first thing you have to think about are the parameters available to you in the clouds. So each cloud uh, will tell you if they're case sensitive, if they have a max number of tags and labels, is there a max number of like Unicode characters and values per tag? Are they restricted characters that you have to use? And so you can keep all of these items in mind when you're building it. So you're not like, ooh, I wanna use ats and question marks and whatnot, and they're not allowed. So what we recommend, first of all, is use a standardized case sensitive format figure out, do you want the whole name or do you want a, a shortened version? So for environment, do you want it to say environment or ENV? We want everyone to use environment, all lowercase letters. Then for each tag value, we want the full word, not prod and dev, we want production, development. Um, and then let people know, publish it internally so it's available for people to have. Uh, one of the biggest things that I see are communication issues. Companies get so large that half the company doesn't know what they're supposed to be doing, and then you end up with these kind of crazy tag tags. And so if you have a place where people can internally go and monitor which tags they should be using, what they should look like, which are the required tags that they have, and I've seen this for some of our customers. They're like, we want everyone to use project, owner, environment, and cost center, and this is what it should look like. And then they have no problem building out those four perspectives because everybody's following that strategy. In order to maintain that and make sure that people are actually following through, we have policies in the platform that you can set up to alert you when you're missing tags. I will show this to you in a little bit. These policies will catch any new infrastructure that's created without those tags. And then you also have the assets report that you can go where you can create a list of assets that are missing tags. I have a feeling this is what I was talking about before in response to your question, where you could go in and actually look at this list of assets and sort them by cost. And then uh, you can also incorporate missing tags into perspectives. So you could create an entire grouping of untagged assets. And then you can filter on that group and view cost trends and things like that, kind of like when we drilled into the assets not allocated. The other thing you can get, do is actually rename your assets not allocated to something else, like un, uh, unallocated items. Um, I think one of these has it already renamed. I'm going to check real quick here and see if it's this one. Um, and we can take a look at what that would actually look like. Some of the other best practices while we're waiting is if you have an automation or scripting tool that will help you enforce tagging. So Terraform, Azure policies, we do have policies in the platform as well that you can use to, um, to enforce those tagging. So this is what it looks like. You could put missing tag and then it would show up in your cost history report. So if I filtered by, what was that environment? Instead of an assets not allocated grouping, I should see a grouping called missing tags. So it kind of cleans it up a little bit and then you know that that group in particular is the one that's missing the tag. It's a cool workaround. Always best practice to apply more tags now in case you need them later. So uh, if you know that you're gonna be reporting on three things but you might want five later on, just tell people five now. It's gonna be much easier than getting them to add them later on. Uh, standardize your tags across clouds and business units. This is also really important. So a lot of our platform is separate where you have your reporting for AWS, you have your reporting for Azure, but we do have multi-cloud reports. And that's when this, this strategy will really come into place. Because if you go into your Amazon report, you'll see your Amazon assets. If you go into your Azure, you'll see your Azure. If you go into the multi-cloud and those both had different tagging, then you'll have one line for, let's say, environment and one line for ENV. And you're like, well, now I'm back where I started from. But if you 
standardized it and everyone across all the BUs and all the clouds are using full, 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 full words, lowercase, whatever, then you don't have that problem and it'll be one group of all of your environment costs across all your clouds, which is really nice to see. And we have cloud health specific tags that you can use if you don't have access to all of your account subscriptions and projects. Uh, these do not feed back to the cloud provider. So you, they're not going to feed back to Amazon. They're not going to feed back to Azure, but they're available in the cloud health platform if you want to use them in order to tag your infrastructure. So I just mentioned a few different ways that we can manage these things in the platform. So let's actually talk about it. We have a missing tags policy. This slide is for people who want to look at the slides later and it has all the steps to show you. I'm gonna walk you through it in a minute. So uh, we don't need to look at this. Same thing with the assets report. Um, and then we also have a tag management page which gives you visibility into your existing tag structure. So you can actually see which tag keys you have. You can look at all the derivatives of those tag keys, evaluate where, where they're being used, and kind of see when they were created. So um, there's actually quite a few cool screens that we have, and I'm actually going to go into the platform here and show you. So the first one I talked about is policies. So that's found under the setup menu, governance and policies. And here you can build a new policy to identify those missing tags. And I'm gonna go through it really quickly. If you're ever interested in really having somebody walk you through the steps, we have it available in the Cloud Health Academy under the question mark icon under Academy. You can always search for policies or best practices or whatever. But you can go to Amazon Assets. You can go to GCP Assets, or you can go to Azure assets, they're all the same. It's just a different cloud. And then you can look for configuration and say, hey, here's a tag that they need to have. They need to have CHT underscore ENV. That's our tagging strategy. That's the one we've decided on. If it is missing this tag, let me know. Send me an email. And so you can save the condition and add that in. You can do an and, so it has to have ENV and prod and, uh, and production, uh, I'm sorry, and project and uh, business unit, or you can build five different policies. Kind of depends if you want them to have all of them or at least one of them or however you want to build it. You can just keep adding items by adding conditions here. That's a basic policy. If you're going to do multi-cloud, you would build one block and then add a second one for the next cloud. And then you can add another one for another cloud, or you can build three separate policies. Totally up to you how you want to build them. There's multiple ways to do everything. The assets menu is where you can find your cloud. It's, so it's meant to replicate the cloud page. So this is replicating the Azure page. If you're in Amazon, it will replicate the AWS page and it's gonna list out all of the assets. For this particular one, unlike the other things that we've looked at where it's all of your assets across the board, here you have to pick a particular asset. So let's say I choose my instances because that's my highest cost item. One of the things that you can do here is see just a list of all your assets. Really cool, very nice, very useful. There's a lot of things you can do with this report, but you can also filter it down to get a sub selection of your data. And in this case, there's these smart filters. And if you go down to the bottom, you can look for items that are completely untagged. Or you can also say, all right, it has a tag key with a tag value of, whoops, I have to choose the tag key, that would help. Um, so since I said I wanted my CHT ENV, you're going to find it. And then do you want things that don't have a tag here? They're missing this tag completely. Do you want them to have a particular tag value? And you can run the report. And then there should be a field here with the all of the information for those. And you have your 283 results. You can look through them and identify where they're from, what account. You can pull in more columns about this. Uh, pretty much any piece of metadata you want to help you identify where these are coming from and what's going on with them. Uh, you can save it, subscribe to it, export it, etc. And then the other page that we have 
is uh, it's a, re a relatively new page in, in relation to the other pages that we're looking at. It's under governance and it's tag management screen. And this actually allows you to visualize all of the different tag keys in your platform in order to better maintain your tagging strategy. And these can be tags gathered via API from the cloud provider or cost allocation tags from, let's say, the AWS cost and usage report or like Azure's enterprise agreement. This does support AWS, Azure, and GCP. You can see all the clouds here, Azure, AWS, GCP. And it's broken down into seven columns. You have your tag key in the first, you have the cloud provider in the second, you have the number of distinct values. And then this is where it kind of gets interesting. Is used column lets you know if that tag is currently being used in perspectives, policies, reports, anything like that. And if you notice I hovered over it and it's actually telling me what that field actually means. The custom values section indicates that the tag key is from a custom tag set up for your organization. So I mentioned earlier, you can build out those custom tags. The asset count is the number of assets um, within that for that tag key. And then when it was first discovered by Cloud Health Platform. You'll notice that some of these are not checked off. If they are not checked off, they are not currently being used by the platform. And so there's a couple different things you can do on the screen. The first is filter. If I want the item with the most distinct values, click on this, you'll see an ascending or descending order, and then you can identify which ones are being used and which ones aren't. And you can filter this or search. So if I'm interested in the environment tag, I can type in ENV and it's actually not case sensitive or specific here. So it'll show me all of the versions of the environment tag that I have that are in existence. And I can see how many values are in here and assets and stuff to make sure that I'm gathering everything I need. This is a very good example. Granted, it's a demo environment, but it's a really good example of when you don't have a good strategy, how messy it can get. So I really like the screen. Um, there's more to come on this screen, but this is what we have right now. And I think it's a great way to just kind of monitor what's in existence. I'm gonna move on to our untagged resources. So what happens with those items? Um, so there's a couple different reasons why things might be untagged. We talked about a couple of them already where it might be historical data and we didn't have a tagging strategy in place. We also have these items called direct and indirect charges. Direct charges is anything that can be allocated through your perspective. So if you're looking at the list that I have here, it's essentially all your compute charges, all your transfer charges, your storage charges, et cetera. It's very clear for us to figure out exactly where those costs align. You, oh, the question that came up in the chat is, do you need to create a policy in order to create a perspective? You do not. You can create a perspective based off of nothing as long as you have assets in our uh, cloud health platform, you can create a perspective. So they're mutually exclusive. For indirect charges, this is where it gets a little uh, funkier. Uh, it's not associated, any item that is not associated with a resource ID or asset ID. So you can have things like unused RIs or RI prepays. It's not really like identified or they're not taggable resources. And so they're sort of just there. And if you want to put them into a grouping, there is a way that we can do that. So what happens or what are shared costs? How do they work? So like I said, there's charges that can't be tagged and they are charged to certain accounts, subscriptions or projects like support charges, tax, marketplace costs, things like that. You might have a need to distribute those charges across your different perspective groups. And so if you have every application owner pay for their own share of support charges, something like that. And some of these costs might be shared and tagged with common tag keys, but shared values. So it might be like owner underscore shared. <clears throat> and when you have some of these costs, um, they can't really be directly allocated to the perspectives due to how we actually build those out. It has to be at like a higher level than that. And so really what you're going to want to do is figure out how you allocate those costs. So if it is one of those indirect charges, so a support charge, marketplace tax, something like that, we have this section in the platform called cost reallocation rules. Those will take an indirect cost and distribute them to different groups within one or more of your perspectives. You can do it proportionally, you can do it by percentage. We have full videos on that in the academy, but I will show you a quick demo of it 
during the session when we're when we're moving on here. And we also have our direct charges. So some of these charges can be direct, but you still want to share them. And so you can use perspectives and still put them in there. Um, and you can also take a perspective group and reallocate it to other groups. And so that would also be through this cost reallocation section. Um, this is, again, a screenshot for you to have when you're looking at the slides, but I'm going to show you in the platform what that looks like. So cost reallocation rules are under the same setup menu. That's kind of where we've been hanging out today. And we're going to go under here and you'll see you can have multiple. So these kind of look like perspectives in that each one is its own box. And you'll see we have multiple ones already engaged here in our platform. I'm going to build a new one just to show you what that would look like. So give this a second to load. You give it a name of what you're trying to do. Um, and then you can kind of do all kinds of advanced settings, but I'll keep it simple. If you have an indirect cost, you can choose what that indirect cost is. And we have some for Amazon and some for whoop, Azure at the bottom. And you can say, all right, great. You know what? I have this. Uh, our uh, elastic IP charge, let's say. I want to allocate this elastic IP charge to either all of the groups in a particular perspective. So I can say for the perspective of project, I'm going to decide how much of these elastic IP charges go to each of those different subcategories based off of uh, how much I spend, or I can say all, all perspectives. I want it to go into all perspectives and I want it to go under my storage costs or something like that. Or you can take something like a perspective group and say for projects, anytime I see the project test, I actually want to move those costs and reallocate them to either the remaining groups in the project, so all the other projects, in proportion to their direct costs. Or you can say, actually, this one belongs to Paul Revere, and I'm going to give it 50% of the charges, and then I'm going to add, for another 50%, the project is going to go to Bonita. And then all of the charges from this group will go to those. So there's actually like multiple different ways you can choose to reallocate these costs. Um, it's just really a matter of what you're trying to do. So in this case, we're doing indirect costs by direct. We have RI prepay movements, unused RIs can get moved. And you can see one that's actually built since I clicked on it. <laughs> just give it a second. Um, and so we can see any other costs that we have are actually going to be reallocated to our virtual machine costs. So the things that we've talked about in today's session, we talked a little bit about the basics of perspective building. We've talked about the updates that we've had to perspectives, um, some best practices, recommendations on tagging, what um, cloud health specific sections of the platform support tagging related products, and uh, all of our untagged resources and what to do with those, so shared costs. I want to uh, open it up to you guys. If you have any questions about something I haven't talked about yet, items that I have talked about that you want me to uh, elaborate on more, I'm happy to do so. So please feel free to use the chat. If you have nothing, then I thank you so much for joining and I hope you found the session helpful.